Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and this is Faith School. What's Faith School? Faith School is the place where our spirit is fed, our faith grows stronger, and we learn how to be overcomers. That is God's will. Not that we be overcome and defeated and be victims, but that we overcome, that we conquer, that we triumph and win and be more than conquerors. So uh, wherever you are, whatever you've been dealing with, whatever you've been going through, there is victory. The scripture says that the Lord, he, he always makes a way of escape, a way out. So even though you can't see it, there is a way out. There's a way through. There's a way to overcome. And uh, it be, you know, just saying that is faith. <laughs> if you say, if God said there's a way, there's got to be a way. I believe there's a way. I'm looking for that way. So let's pray and let's release faith together. Let's believe that we will hear from Him and we'll get direction. We'll get answers for today and for this time. Father, in Jesus' name, all of us, all of the faith school class all over the world, we join together asking you for the anointing, asking you for the utterance, asking you for direction and help and guidance that only you can give and only you can do. We ask for it and we purpose not to be hearers only, but to be those that put it into practice and do it. And as surely as we do, we know you'll watch over it. You'll perform it. You'll do great things in our life. And we thank you in advance for doing that. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you would turn in our great textbook, the Bible, to the 10th chapter of the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10, for some uh, weeks now, we've been on a, a study that we're calling By Faith. It's a a verse by verse study of the great 11th chapter of Hebrews, the great faith chapter. Sometimes we call it the uh, Heroes of Faith Hall of Fame in chapter 11. And it really, uh, this wasn't written in chapter and verse, so you'll see parts of this in the 10th chapter. You'll also see parts of it in the 12th chapter. And we'll, we'll notice that as we keep going. But in chapter 10 and verse 35, he said, cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. In Hebrews 11.1, 1, when it says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, in some translations it brings out that faith is the, the confidence of things expected. That word uh, substance in the King James could be a little bit blind to us. But it has to do with foundation. It has to do with the basis uh, of your, the reason for your hope, for your expectation. And confidence is really another word for faith. So see, he, in verse 35, he's already talking about faith. Cast not away your confidence, your faith, your trust, which has great recompense of reward. A lot of times people have not prayed, they have not sought God, they, they, they don't go to church, they don't read their Bibles. One of the big reasons why they don't believe it'll do any good. They don't think it will make any difference. They don't believe this verse, that it has great recompense of reward, but it does. God is faithful. And the scripture said that um, if you come to him, you must believe that he is, that he exists, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So does it pay to seek God, to pray, if you pray in faith, to give in faith, to work in faith, to read your Bible in faith, go to church in faith? Uh, just, you know, the fact that you're here joining us in faith school shows you have some faith. <laughs> right? You must believe this. You're going to get some good out of this or elsewise you'd have already flipped the channel, right? You'd be, you'd be on to something else. You think, well, that's a waste of my time. This is not a waste of your time. Now, there's a lot of stuff on TV that is a waste of your time, but this is not. Thank God his word will not return to him void. It will accomplish 
what he intended for it to accomplish. It'll prosper and affect the thing that he sent it to do. He said, you have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we're not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them who believe to the saving of the soul. See, he's talking about faith, faith, faith. And it flows into 11.1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Uh, Everybody say, by it. Now in verse 4, it says, by faith, Abel. And then verse 5, by faith, Enoch. And verse 7, by faith, Noah. And that is the theme all through this chapter, by faith, by faith, by faith. And uh, we have made it all the way down to verse 32 in our study, and we're going to be looking that, at that um, further today in this week. But I want to draw your attention to this, this phrase that we just mentioned, by faith, and, and noticing that the faith, even though it's the same God kind of faith, it is in different areas. Uh, they're not all the same area. Uh, hold on to this place in your, in your scripture and go to Romans, please, the 12th chapter. Romans chapter 12, Romans 12, 3, he says, I say through the grace given to me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Uh, Some translations say a measure of faith, but measure of faith. God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. And then he says, for as we have many members in one body and all the members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, every one members of one another. Verse 6, having then gifts differing according to the grace that's given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to what? According to the proportion of faith. Uh, Listen to another translation, the complete Jewish Bible of verse 6. It says, uh, uh, we have gifts that differ and that are meant to be used according to the grace that's been given to us. And he said, if prophecy, use it to the extent of your trust. And then he goes on to talk about giving, uh, leading, serving, And all of those have to do with the same thought. Do it according to your measure of faith, according to your proportion of faith. This is such a big thing. Um, Even though God graces us and makes things available to us, we don't automatically experience them. It's not just all up to God whether we do. And how much of it we experience is not just all up to God. It's according to our faith. Have you heard that phrase when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John? What would Jesus tell people again and again? As you have believed, so be it done to you. According to your faith, be it done unto you. And here he's saying, we don't all have the same graces in the same areas. But whatever area you're graced in, you will minister in that, uh, not just according to God's will or plan, but according to your faith to step out in it. And with that in mind, notice back in Hebrews uh, 11, in Hebrews 11, what did, what did Abel have faith to do? Verse 4. By faith, he had, excuse me, Abel had faith to offer to God a more excellent sacrifice. Then verse 5, what did Enoch have faith to do? He had faith to walk with God. He communed with God by faith. And uh, verse 7, what did, what did Noah have faith to do? He had faith to uh, prepare the ark. 
Um, can you see what I'm talking about? When we say, uh, do you have faith? Or somebody says, well, I have faith. I have a lot of faith. For what? <laughs> to do what? See, sometimes people just, just talk in abstracts and generalities, and it really doesn't mean anything. Uh, and the thing is, all of us are different people with different background, different experience, and different graces even. And so you could, you could have strong faith for this, but not so strong for this. Can you see that, friend? And uh, some things we don't need strong faith for because it's not our thing. Huh? It's not our area. It's not our grace. We don't need to be trying to use our faith to do it because the Lord didn't tell us to do it. Didn't call us to do it. Didn't grace us to do it. But if he did call you and grace you to do it, then you can use your faith to do it. And how, how far you go in it, how much of it is manifested, will be in direct proportion to our measure of developed faith. God gets, you all, gets us all started with starter faith. <laughs> Didn't it say he's dealt to every man? Is right? A measure of faith. He, you know, when we're born again, we're not born fully developed spiritually. The Bible said as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. But there is no new creation in Christ without faith. He did not cause you to be born again faithless. Not a one. Not ever. But there, is, there are a lot of people who were born again 40, 50, 60 years ago, and they are still have the starter faith. It has not been developed beyond that because it hasn't been fed, it hasn't been used, and so it doesn't develop. The spiritual development, growth in faith is not automatic. It must be fed, hence faith school, <laughs> right? That's why we're having faith school. Why? So my spirit and my faith can be fed and, and built up, and I see how to use it. Now, you, you can't fully develop in faith just by watching faith school. A disclaimer. <laughs> you can watch faith school night and day, 24-7, and that alone will not cause you to develop and be strong in faith. You actually have to use your faith. You got to use it on whatever it is in your life, particularly in the areas that you're graced to. You know, if it's faith to pray, what do you got to do? You got to pray. Faith to give, faith to serve. In fact, look at it again in Romans 12. I didn't finish reading it, but it, it'll do us well to read. He said in verse 6, Romans 12, 6, having then gifts differing according to the grace that's given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Now this is, uh, this is very enlightening. Um, prophecy, sometimes people might think, well, man, that's, that's all the Holy Ghost. No, it's not all the Holy Ghost. Just like people might think, well, talking in tongues, well, that's all the Holy Ghost. No, it's not all the Holy Ghost. Uh, the utterance is from the Holy Spirit. But it takes faith to speak it out. It takes faith to step up. You can, if you, to prophesy. And prophesying is not just for prophets. The scripture said, for you may all prophesy, one by one. Didn't he say that? Now that doesn't mean predicting the future. That's another thing. But simple prophecy is speaking uh, unto edification, exhortation, and comfort, the scripture says. And it's inspired utterance in a known tongue. It's very similar to speaking in tongues, except it's in a language you understand. But you can be prompted to prophesy. That doesn't mean you'll prophesy. You understand what I'm saying? You can be prompted to speak in tongues, and this Holy Spirit can be endeavoring to give you utterance. That does not mean you'll speak in tongues. It takes faith can you see this, class? When you got the prompting, when you got the urging, the Spirit of God move on you, prompt you, 
the, you, can, you can bite your lip, you can shut down and do nothing. There will be no manifestation. Or you can step out and say, well, what am I going to say? You don't know. <laughs> well, how am I going to say it? I don't know. By faith. Right? You just, you just believe that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an effort to express what I've got in my spirit. And as I do, the Spirit of God will enable me to express it. And so he said, if it's prophecy, then prophesy how? According to the proportion or the measure of faith. Prophesy. So what does that mean? If you have a little bit of faith, you'll prophesy a little. To a little degree of it. If you have more faith, you will express it better and more fully and more completely. Come on, can you see that? Uh, There's an element of prophecy in teaching and preaching. You know, I'm I'm teaching and preaching right now. Same thing is true with all all God-called teachers and preachers. Um, I'm not... Everything I'm saying is not coming from memory. Everything I'm saying is not coming off a page I'm reading. Uh, I have something in my heart, a truth and a direction, and I believe we can get there. So what am I doing? I'm believing God to give me the words to say it. And how well I do that comes back to what? My faith. Do I believe I can get it out. (laughs) Do I believe God will help me? And at the same time, I'm believing he's given you ears to hear. Right? But for this to be a complete thing, you have to be in faith that you hear it. That you understand. Somebody say, I'm hearing it. I'm I'm getting it. I'm I'm receiving it. (laughs) See that? That's got nothing to do with the understanding of your mind. You're just releasing faith. And uh, it's very important that when you hear something or see something in the Word that you don't understand, don't talk about how hard it is or it's a difficult passage or that's so complicated. That will put you further from understanding it. You you need to talk faith. If you see something you don't understand, you say, uh, the Spirit of God makes me of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. He shows it to me. I get it. I have an anointing of the Holy One, and I know and see and understand everything I need to see. He's ordering my steps. He's directing my paths. I'm His sheep. I know His voice. I hear His voice. I follow His voice. Amen? Amen. And you need to say that when your head says, we don't understand any of it. What are you talking about? You say, hush, I'm not talking to you. And you say, you talk faith according to the proportion of faith. Now, he didn't just say prophesying, but he said, verse 7, or ministry. Now, we would, another word for ministry is service, serving. This, this has have to do with all of the ministry of helps, all through every kind of ministry. If you're going to serve the way you should, it's going to take faith. You're going to have to believe, I can do this. I can do it well. I can do the job. I can get it done. And if you start talking stuff the enemy brings to you and say, well, you can't please them. You can't get anything right. We don't have anything to work with. None of this is going to work out. That's unbelief. And it's disrespect. And it will open you up to you know, more and more unthankfulness will cause your, your understanding to be darkened. Uh, nothing works right without faith. <laughs> but even when you're experiencing some temporary frustration and your machine broke down and, and they didn't come through, they said they'd have it in three days, now they're saying it's three weeks, and, and I'm talking about the ministry of helps, then uh, you hang up the phone and And what are you going to tell your supervisor? And what are you going to do this? That's when you say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. world. Um, He always causes me to triumph. I have the, see, talk faith, talk faith. I have the mind of Christ. Um, I can do all things. This is a good one right here, right? (laughs) I I can do, (laughs) because there are things telling you, you can't do this. 
you can't get this. This is not going to work. And if you agree with that, you're stuck. You're done. But if you're serving, how do you do it? Well, then you, you wait on your serving. And again, it all comes back to verse 6, according to the proportion of faith. Or teaching, I just got through talking about that, how well you're going to teach spiritually comes right back to how much faith you have to get utterance from the Lord, get revelation from Him, express it, get it out. Uh, or he that exhorteth on exhortation. Now, you don't have to be a, in, in the fivefold ministry to be an exhorter. That means you're an encourager, right? And, and if you have somebody that's fallen apart on you or somebody that's really been through something terrible and horrible and they really need help, how can I help them? Well, if you say, well, I don't, I don't know what to tell them. I mean, I can't help them. Well, then you can't. You're stuck. But if you have faith and say, Lord, give me some words. Give me, give me some words that would comfort them and strengthen them and encourage them. Then according to your faith, you will keep looking till you find it. You'll keep making an effort until you say it. And you'll see their eyes light up and you go, okay, that's it. That, that's helping them. Our, our giving, see, this is the ministry of giving. Uh, how, how well am I going to do in my giving? According to your proportion of faith. He that rules or leads. He that shows mercy with cheerfulness. It'll all happen according to the proportion of our faith. The complete Jewish Bible says, according to the extent of your trust. So back to Hebrews 11. When we say by faith and, and of faith, it's different in every area. It's different from individual to individual. And so uh, I've seen people just get offended because you asked them about their faith in an area. They say, oh, I, I, I have faith. I have faith. I'm a believer. Well, anybody that understands anything about faith knows you are not fully developed in faith in all areas. Right? You have not arrived <laughs> at the greatest faith in all areas. Most people are, you know, woefully low in faith. In many areas. Do you remember Jesus' ministry? How many times he looked at the disciples and says, Where's your faith? <laughs> Why did you doubt? O oh, ye of little faith. A couple of times, not many, a couple of times he said, That's great faith. I hadn't seen faith like that in the whole country. Now that's what we want to hear. Yes. Anybody in, in faith school want to hear that? Yes. We want the Lord, as he's scanning the planet, you know, looking for faith. We want a light to go off where we live. Yes. Is that right? We want it to light up on the screen. And he goes, look at that. There's some faith there. And so anybody that understands anything about real faith is not going to get offended uh, if somebody's asking us about where our believing is on a thing. Uh, because when people say, I have faith and get offended, they're just talking about, I believe in God. Well, I have faith. I'm a believer. Well, yeah, so you believe that when you die, you're going to heaven. You believe you're saved. That's great. You need more than that to live a victorious life down here. You need faith to overcome in each area. If, it's, if I'm having problems in my body, physically, I need faith for healing. Is that right? You know, faith that I'm going to heaven is good, but that's not going to help me here right now. Can y'all see that or not? And, and, and just hearing about heaven is not going to build my faith to receive healing right now necessarily. I need to hear scriptures about healing. I need to hear scriptures about restoration and strength. If I'm having trouble paying my bills, I don't just need to spend all my time talking about water baptism. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, water baptism is wonderful, but especially if I've already been baptized <laughs> and I know I'm saved. And, and, and you're laughing, but do you know a lot of churches, the only message people ever hear is a salvation message, right? And, and so much so that, that when there's a, like people come back to church and they hear a real strong salvation message, it's so strong they think, well, maybe I should go get saved again, you know? Uh, <laughs> Thank God for the salvation message. You never get started without it. But it's not the end. It's, not, it's the beginning. 
The just don't just get saved by faith. The just shall live. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> live by faith. That's 24-7. That's on the job. That's at home. That's playing sports. That's in the classroom. Everything that you do, uh, if it's the will of God for you to do it, the way you're going to be successful, the way you're going to reach the full potential of it, the way you're going to uh, have victories in it is by your faith. Hallelujah. Amen. We're born again by faith. We're healed by faith. We receive the Holy Spirit by faith. We're delivered by faith. We're provided for by faith. We're protected by faith. We please God by faith. This is the victory that overcomes the entire world. What? Even our faith. And so what Hebrews 11 is, is revealing to us is that all of these individuals, this, these are not fairy tales, this is history. All of these, these, these people lived and, and dealt with things in their life, just like we are in our generation. And they had faith in these different areas that allowed them to come through seemingly impossible situations and experience miracles in their life. They had faith for. Abraham had faith to obey. Sarah had faith to receive and conceive. I mean, on and on and on. Do you need faith for something today? You might say, I need faith for a job. You can have a good job. You can. All things are possible to him that believes. I need faith to pay these bills. You can have faith to pay these bills. I need faith to get some healing in my body. You can have faith to get healing in your body. And you have come to the right place. <laughs> Keep coming. Come back tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And the Spirit of God is feeding us and boosting us and strengthening us. And we're not just going to be hearers only. We're going to use this faith. Come on, everybody, say it out loud. I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome the world by faith. I'm strong in faith, giving glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, that's our time for today. Uh, the Lord's got us off to a wonderful start this week. Come back with us tomorrow. Until next time, we'll see you in faith school. I've got the Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.